What's up YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Thanks for the support on the last Jack Straw video. I really appreciate it. It was a fun video to come back with. Really proud of it. Today's video is sort of a snippet of what we can go over if we do Zoom Skype lessons on one-on-one -on -one individually, which is how do you progress with fretboard knowledge and getting the most of the fretboard without thinking so hard on what you're doing. If that makes sense. So with knowing all your notes on the fretboard, triads, scales, right, some modes, and how they all intertwine together. All this guitar stuff is really just connecting the dots and if you know how to connect the dots well, you can play anything you want. It's also like driving home with the GPS. So you can either follow the GPS route and get home at a certain time, or you can go on your own detour. It may take longer, it may take shorter, but in overall, you still get home. That's how I see the guitar fretboard and guitar playing. So again, this is about how you can progress with your fretboard knowledge and what helps me that hopefully can help you in all this fretboard journey. So enjoy today's video. All right, YouTubers. So as you know, today we're talking about the fretboard and the wonders of the fretboard. Specifically how we can quote unquote mash the fretboard and use the fretboard to the most that we can without thinking. Now, I guess the ultimate goal is freedom. So when you're playing on stage or whatever, you're not thinking at all, you're just playing, right? And before we dive into my ways on how I think is best to learn and to progress on the fretboard is an analogy I say a lot is think of the guitar fretboard like a piano keyboard, specifically the white keys. So on a piano, the white keys are all C major, right? Because there are no sharps or flats. It's also a minor. Another key signature with no sharps or flats. So, in all this, my ultimate goal is to have you guys say, if we're in the key of G, you know. Where all the G notes are, right? So you have effortless freedom on the fretboard. So now, how do we get there? Well, I think the first step that we all have to know are all the notes on the fretboard. F, G, D, B, G, E flat, B, A flat, F sharp, A, C sharp, G sharp, F sharp, a, right? B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Right? And that's pretty simple. You just sit down, dedicate the time, and I'll even say, say it out loud, and go string by string, fret by fret. We're in no rush for all this, remember. E, F, G, G sharp, A, right? B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, right? And go string by string, fret by fret. Why? Because that'll help you with the next step, which is scales. Specifically, major scales, as well as knowing their key signatures, right? So for example, when you're in the key of C, you know that there are no sharps or flats. So as long as you hit C, you can hit F. Right? Because there are no sharps or flats. So as for the scale part, you have to know your scale shapes. Right here. Right? Here, on the eighth fret of the low E string, for example, C. Right? them all. 
You can also do it here. Right? But that's not where you end. The next step is saying, okay, cool. Let's do a C major scale or whatever scale, but let's start from a different degree, right? Let's start from the fourth degree. And the fourth degree of C is F. So you just do F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's a mode, but we won't dive into that now. Just think of it as a regular scale, just starting from a different degree. Let's say another one, C, from the sixth degree, which is A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. That's just A minor. Let's do now a C major scale starting from the major seventh degree, which is B. B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Right, and do it two octaves. Then when you feel if you got it, you can do it three octaves. So if we get from this C to say here, or a different key from this G to that G, right? You want to start small and then slowly expand so you're progressing the whole fretboard because that'll really help you figure everything out. Also, with scales, you can say, okay, cool, if my C is right here. I can also do, let's say, A major, right? I can also do F major. Also, in the same area, I can do G major. Right? Figure out how many scales you can do in one area. You can also do D major, starting with your pinky. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Right? The next part, once you figure out your scales and everything and the intervals, I would say, you have to know what chords are in the scale, right? That brings us to triads. You have to know how to your major triads. Same with minor, right? And everywhere you can play them. If we're in C, we can do all this. Right? A great way to practice triads is you can do like a one, four, five blues. So if we're doing again in C, the one chord would be C, four chord would be F, five chord would be G. So with triads, you would do and move that across each pair of strings. So you can do, right, four chord. Five chord. Four chord. One chord. Five. Right? Next step would be integrate your triads into songs. One song that I like to talk about a lot is Jack Straw by The Grateful Dead because it has four chords and it moves pretty fast. The chords are D major, B minor, A, E. You can also do that, D, B minor, a, E. Right? 
I'll just do it. Also. Or. And back to normal. Right? You're doing the least movement with the most chords happening around it. So for example, Jack Straw, and take whatever song you want and translate it. We're all gonna play that same song around the fretboard. Then when you progress with all that, you can start integrating modes and knowing what makes a mode. So for example, if I say we're doing a Dorian scale, right, if we're in the key of A now, and we're doing a Dorian scale, I would say, okay, right, cool, it's a minor scale, but with a major sixth. Right? A mixolydian mode in the key of A is a major scale, but with flat seven. Right? If I hear Lydian, again, a major scale, but with a sharp four. You have to know all this stuff if you want to progress to knowing the fretboard like the back of your hand, in my opinion. And then it just a lot of practice, a lot of repetition, take it slow. And I think it's also great is to say it out loud so you know what you're doing and your brain knows what you're doing. Don't memorize these kind of stuff, right? You don't want to memorize your shapes. That's great for beginning, but you really want to know what makes that scale or that chord happen. Right, you want to know where else you can play it. You want to know how you can play three octave arpeggios, three octave major scales, triads. Maybe you want to do drop two stuff where you're doing C major seven like this. But why is that C major seven, right? Or right here. Or right here. Why does that stuff work? You have to know, you have to be able to say it why it works, if that makes sense. So this was just like a brief intro to what I teach on Zoom and Skype and how you can improve your fretboard knowledge. If you want to dive more into this for a dedicated hour with me personally, you can reach out to me. My info is down below in the description. We can do a Zoom or Skype lesson in 2021 and dive really into this kind of stuff and how to apply it to music and make music with it. Because this may seem a lot of like training camp, but then you have to apply it to songs and playing live. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know there's a lot of talking in this one, but a lot of talking for fretboard stuff, sorry. Um, if you did enjoy today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in 2021. Take care.